Ladies All right. and gentlemen, boys you got the and intro. girls. Oh, you know I got the intro today. 6.30 p.m. on a Thursday, so you know it's the Columbus DJ Podcast. We had to go down 71 Cincinnati to find these two, DJ Xanity and April Rain. Thank you guys so much for being here with us today. It's going to be a great episode of Corrupt. I know you have to leave early, so I'm not going to waste any time with pleasantries. We've already been talking, getting to know each other. I'm just going to go straight into introductions and... Uh, the first one is going to be my first ever DJ battle down in Cincinnati. Uh, I got to battle this person, and she whooped my butt. We tied in the first <laughs> round, and uh, it was as I felt like I played well, and I came back in the second round, and she put this routine, like this one-minute routine on me that was just absolutely dope. And uh, we've been friends ever since. Ladies and gentlemen, DJ April Rain from hey. Cincinnati, hey. Ohio. How's it going, April? Hey, how are you? Thank you for having me on the show. Um, I, I'm surprised you brought that up, Access. I wasn't going to touch it, I, you know. <laughs> I, I tell everybody. Like, that was, it was a he great did. moment. You talked about it, like, uh, a couple episodes ago, actually. With, uh, with Fuse and Combat. Oh, yeah. you, okay, you did? Okay. <laughs> it was dope, but, like, that was my, my first, like, entry into the battle scene. I'd never, I, I hadn't even, like, had a, like, a overtime or, like, you know, mix-off thing prepared. Uh, but I got one now. <laughs> so, April, somebody need to humble yeah, of course, him. Of course. Somebody you needed learned, to humble him. Learned to now, where's the recording? Uh, but yeah. it was, I, 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 there is a recording somewhere, Zan. I, uh, I don't, I'd have to dig in, like, um, my Google Drive folder. But we're not going to go through that now. April, if you could tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself, how you got into DJing and your story, please. Yeah, so, you know, um, thank you for having me on. I, um... You know, this is a great question because it, it gave me a chance to really reflect on my my start and how long I've been in it. And it was just like a trajectory of up and, you know, just all that. But how I got in um, really was through battling. Um, and, um, you know, at first I was considering, should I tell my age? It doesn't matter. I'm 44. I started out on Central States campus. Um, HBCU and Wilberforce, Ohio, and I really loved, I really wanted to produce, and all of my favorite uh, producers, uh, like, you know, Pete Rock and, uh, yeah. you know, DJ Premier, they were DJs, so I figured I needed to go this route. There was a DJ battle on Central States campus, and one of my mentors, his name is DJ Ike B um, in, in Dayton, Ohio, he was one of the um, DJs that battled and won. And as soon as I saw them, um, they were doing different things, tricks. Um, they were going down and coming up with masks on. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I need to do that. I, I have to know how to do that. And so um, I, you know, went and studied under him. Other DJs, you know, the, you know, college parties and all that stuff. And so following all the DJs, really studying them. And then also at the same time learning how to, to make beats. So um, back in the day, they, they didn't have the computers and all that stuff, uh, but they had um, the ASR-10 and the, you know, SB-12s and MPC. So, you know, going, doing school, studying under the DJs, then going down to Dayton at a studio and learning how to, to make beats. And so I, I was doing that. Then I, once I got, went into debt, going to <laughs> get um, turntables, you know, and, and joining record pools and all that stuff. And, and finally I got all my stuff together and I started rocking parties, you know, and it was really cool there. Right now, we, we, you know, we, we, we didn't call it open format back then, but at a college, you got to be able to play for all different types of people from different regions. So we had people from Detroit, Chicago, you know, Dayton, you know, Florida, and so you hear, you always heard a mixture of, you know, bass and, you know, all that stuff. I um, mean, of course, you know, 90s hip hop, you had that space there, but, you know, I, I had to have all that in my crate. So you, that's why we see all these records <laughs> back here, you know, I had to have a big, big stack. Um, and, you know, you know, I had some um, back braces back there and even my 20s, <laughs> you know, carrying all that stuff. Um, but, you know, from then, once I got there, you know, I, I built a name for myself. And then um, I, I told you earlier before we got on, um, my husband uh, was also a DJ. Um, and so he, he actually showed me some things <laughs> back in the day um, as well. And so, but he was more of a mixtape DJ. And, and so anyway, so 
I came down to Cincinnati. He's from Cincinnati, so we ended up getting married and all that good stuff. So um, anyways, I, I just just from that history, you, my genre, you know, you know, is all types of music, you know. Um, favorite things I like to spin, though, I, you know, right now, and to be honest, you know, I'm right now in graduate school, going back to school for mental health counseling. And so when I'm listening and studying, I can't listen to words because uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of words to say, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now I'm listening to liquid drum and bass you know okay. what I'm saying? that you know, has that you know that those chords but it's you know just kind of hip hoppy, but it's fast and it helps me to zone out and just kind of get into the zone and start cranking out papers and stuff like that uh, but then when i'm taking a break from that i still listen to timeless music like you know uh, i don't know uh marvin gay anita baker um jill scott and then um some stuff like we are king and stuff like that but um, as you can see, I got the records, my, my, my favorite, uh, uh, I guess, turntables to work on. Now I got the 12, Rain 12s at Elements. So I, I'm like, you know, at first I was like, eh, but now I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm getting it. You know, they got the 72. I have personally the um, Pioneer S9. And um, yeah, so right now, um, I, as you can tell, well, I don't know if you can tell or not, but because I'm in school and then also now I have a, a new position at Elements as a program director, um, I'm not spinning out too much right now. <laughs> but, um, but favorite types of um, venues that I really love to spin is, is where I just can just be myself um, and, you know, spin. I might spin some of that, you know, lo-fi, some of that new disco with the, a lot of reworks and stuff like that, some K Tronada, mm -hmm. that type of feel, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, um, I really enjoy doing um, like poetry shows and stuff like where you're spinning in, in between, but you can uh, still set that mood and vibe, but then you can get that neo song and, and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. those are my favorite gigs and um, that's where I am right now. Just, you know, just a lot going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, James, uh, do you have any questions for April? Cause we're, gonna, we're definitely gonna talk and come back to elements, um, but I wanna go sure. to Zan before that, but I know you got some kind of follow up question for her. <laughs> no, I just I I think it's cool that you were you started as a tur. First of all, when, when you use the words back in the day, you know you're an OG, right? <laughs> when you just have to when you have to explain things. But also, like I think it's really cool that you uh, started as a turntablist, right? And so you were learned a lot of the technical side of things quick before yeah. you had to learn, you know, music organization, uh, library building, uh, some you know, which is uh, you know the tech side of things now seems like. It's like second to those things. Everybody yeah. knows they love music. They know they know a lot of music, and then it takes them a while to get into learning how to DJ, or they just never really learn how to beat match on their headphones anymore because they have computers and stuff. So it's just really cool to hear you. You literally started with the hardest part, and then you went from there. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got, a, I got a question for you, April, because the only time I've ever been to a record store is in Cincinnati. I went with Bombay. And apparently, oh, it's, apparently okay. it's a very uh, like famous record store or whatever. But uh, back in the day, my understanding is like you would really protect like the records you had because or like you would protect like where you got a record, where you got a sample. That's not really the case today. We got Shazam, you know, we got a million, you know, 1001 track list. What was it like back then when it was when you had to kind of protect where you were getting your stuff or where you got your samples. Like, did you have, did you participate in that at all? Or were you still sharing music like we are now? Look, okay, so, you know, it's so funny. So, um, I, I, uh, earlier I talked about my mentor, um, DJ Ike B. And so he um, was on a radio station called, called 94.5 The Beat. And, you know, he would play stuff and, um, you know, like, oh, what's that? And you go to look at the record and you know it'll be like black nothing is on the right? he would mark it out you know <laughs> they would peel off stuff you could not you know it was just like <laughs> me i wasn't like that i'm like because i i know how i'm trying to get in the game and i'm like i can't do my people like that you know they ask me i'm gonna tell you you know it's like because you know we share but you know the you know the higher name djs you know they um before shazam and all that stuff 
that is a way that you would set yourself apart. You know, you get, sure. especially he, he's on the radio, he's getting, you know, exclusives or, you know, all that type of stuff. Whereas, you know, I'm in a record pool, I might get some things, but some things I'm not getting and you can't really find this um, in the stores, you know. Or you're getting it so, late. Yeah, so it was just it was just the way that you would set yourself apart, and um, and and I I understand it. If you're trying to eat and you you got the exclusives, you know you that's going to really you know get you the the major um, gigs and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, for me, I I wasn't like that, and you know still of course not like that. I can't be like that now. But yeah, um, I'm share share like for me. Hey, that's not what uh. the, that's not what Noah from the Animal Cracker said. He said you were vicious. He said you were protecting all the joints. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no I'm playing. I'm playing. So, uh, we got to get Sammy, Noah from the Animal Crackers. On. Sammy Bland says April the goat. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Big shout out to Snipes uh, also in the chat. Uh, I want to hop over to Xanity. Uh, Alexandro, tell us who you are, your DJ story, and uh, what you do. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for having me on here. And uh, April, thanks for sharing your story, too, because, you know, there was some stuff I, I've known you since I was 16. And, you know, you know we've uh, just learned some new stuff. So, um, so yeah, my story is um, I grew up playing music. I grew up playing trumpet, piano. And when I turned 16, I realized, you know, I didn't really want to keep doing that for the rest of my life, but I loved music. Uh, I did jazz trumpet and uh, just always loved jazz, just had such an appreciation for it. And so, but you know, like I said, I knew I didn't want to go off to school and do that. So I kind of tried to figure a way to tie my love for music into something I could do that will take me into adulthood and help me make money. Um, but I always loved turntablism. It was something that I was just like, it felt so far out of reach. And so I wanted to figure out if it was something that I could do first. So I actually looked online, like where I could maybe, you know, go, cause I was 16, I couldn't go to the club. So I'm just like, where can I go to figure some stuff out about this? So I went to Elements and I met April when I was 16 before I even got my own set and uh, went there and kind of figured there was turntables there and that I believe you had a controller there. Uh, but mainly I tried to just do the vinyl. Um, and at 16, it was quite expensive for me to buy some vinyl. So I've got my own controller. Um, and then, yeah, I, I started DJing house parties for fr you know friends. Like I told my friends, like, I'm a DJ now. Like, <laughs> let me come DJ your party. <laughs> it's I, like self-promoted myself so I could go to my friend's house and just show off to them um, the best I could. But uh, so I started doing that. I started DJing, you know, college house parties and stuff like that for friends. And then really like, you know, word of mouth just got out through people that way. And um, yeah, by the time I was 21, you know, I was able to finally get into some clubs and start DJing. Uh, and I think I might have DJed a club when I was 20, but I don't know if that was, if, if I was that young yet. But, um, but yeah, then that's when I just fell in love with it even more because of just, you know, that reaction that you get from people just, you know, I, I love the feeling of just working so hard for something and then you have that like the gig and then it, it pays off or, you know, like you just have that moment. Um, but that's just a, a small part of it. But um, but yeah, so got started, you know, I DJed for a couple of years. I was in college full time, uh, just DJing on the side. And then um, and then, yeah, I started DJing some corporate gigs. I uh, started DJing weddings and stuff like that. And it's, it's really just blossomed into this, like, just thing that I am just so happy, you know, just connections and just talking to people and just, you know, it's really, I mean, it's kind of been like a word of mouth business almost. I mean, you know, you just kind of take that, your reputation and your trust and you just keep building it with people. So, and it kind of just, takes off sometimes so uh but yeah that's been part of my journey I'm trying to think of what else cool stuff that I can kind of talk about um you know because my I, I wish you know I've done some battles and stuff like that too before so and that's something that, that I I think that that is like something that 
is a dream for me, like to be a battle DJ and just be so tight at scratching that you're just like, you know, that's, that's the end goal for me for sure. So do you, you like, you like playing all genres of music or do you have a favorite? I do have a favorite, um, definitely hip hop and house. Um, Perfect. I just love to get a room moving, no matter what room that is that I've chosen to be in for that night. Like, you know, like you were saying, the poetry, even if it's just like vibes in between something or, you know, if it's just you for the night and you have to headline, like, you know, just, um, but yeah, I, I just, I really like incorporating stuff that's now and, but taking you back and also, you know, just getting people to just have a good time and dance. So sure. I know nice. that, uh, like, uh, my, I'm really loud on somebody's speaker. So hey. I, I heard myself. I was like, oh, shit. Um, so, yeah, like 16, like I know a lot of DJs would be jealous that you got you started at 16. That's mm -hmm. incredible. So so like you were obviously doing house parties, but like 16 to 20 to 21, mm -hmm. were you staying after it? Or were you staying pretty consistent? Uh, I not as much. No, like really it was just uh, like my friend had like a, a jewelry launch party. I did. I did do a wedding. I remember when I was like 19 or 20 and then I did a couple weddings after that. Um, and yeah, I was mainly just doing it. You know, it's just like a hobby at first because I wasn't fully convinced at that age that I could be famous or that I could really do this. I have always struck, you know, kind of struggled with the self-confidence um, of it. And just, um, so I really would say like, I, I would like to claim, you know, 11 years, but really I would say I would like to claim six or seven sure. years yeah. of, of, you know, DJing and really, really being, co you know, committed and like somebody that, you know, just practicing and stuff like that. So, cause I also, when I was that age, you know, I was playing piano and, and trumpet still for school. So, That's you know, crazy. something that was like an in-between hobby for me. Like, I want to ask oh, about this uh, this jazz. Well, I don't even want to ask about it. Just next time you stream on IG, I want a DJ Xanity jazz set. Uh, my buddy <laughs> Barty cuts those jazz Tuesdays, so it can't be on Tuesday. But yeah. uh, any other, I want a jazz set mm -hmm. from DJ Xanity. And then, I, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, I would love to. I mean, I've been seeing like what nostalgia does and stuff here in Cincinnati and they'll have like, you know, some some uh, sets like that. And they've definitely, you know, stuff like that has definitely inspired me. I'm like, oh, you can get a, you know, like a lit jazz set vibe going. So, <laughs> you know, for a while I thought I was like, man, people are not gonna appreciate this as much as what I do. But, you know, I think nowadays people are, they've, their ears are more open than, than ever because there's just so much going on. Yeah, well, sure. I mean, like, people are at home. I mean, like, when I'm at home, I'm not listening to club music, you know, right. for yeah. myself. Like, I, want, I prefer to listen to, like, some jazz or whatever it is. And I think that's kind of been the nice part about streaming is if you're a club DJ right now, you can stream anything, R&B, jazz, like, classical, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Like, you know, you can, you can put it out there on the Internet and not have to worry about a crowd. So, yeah, I want a jazz uh, DJ Zandy said, and then it's it's shocking, not shocking, but like uh, it's surprising to me that you were saying that you struggle with um, the the um, oh my gosh, what am I trying to say confidence. here? Yeah, the confidence because mm -hmm. whenever I see you, you got like three or four people in your crew that are hyping you up like as you're DJing, like I literally the whole time. I know, right? Like the whole time they're hyping you up. So yeah, I'm glad you have that kind of support that like you know support sure. group that comes out to your sets like that. Yeah. How have the weddings been going? Uh, they slowed down. I mean, after this summer, I only had, I think my last wedding was in September. So, um, but yeah, I didn't accept any more after that this year, just because I, the three weddings during COVID that I DJed, one was just, they wanted to fully dance like it wasn't COVID. And the other two just stayed so separated and distanced that like, I was glad that I was able to make their day really nice, but like, it just did not feel the same. So I just was like, you know, catch, I, I have some reserve for 2021. So, but I just didn't want to, you know, do anything the rest of the year. Cause I have, I have a booking manager that I, I work with and he, you know, offered me some, but I just like was, I was just like, you know what, let's just hold off. So, 
and uh, you, you have the day job as well, right? I do, yeah. Right. I work with athletes and help manage nonprofit foundations during the day. April, I want to jump back to you. Uh, we've talked about it already. Since he has a really... Uh, really, really, really strong turntable is seen. Uh, you talk about the animal crackers. You talk about Richie infused with the battles. Um, yourself and, and others. Um, I, why, why can't I think of the dude? Um, I mean, you got Shines and then uh, the dude who plays. Man, all right, never mind. I'm, I'm, Davey C or not uh, Davey C? Davey C's dope. Don't get me wrong, Hughes? but uh, the dude who is uh, he plays Not on the combat. spot of the water. Combat obviously is dope, but the guy who's on the water, uh, weird cat. Uh, all right, I'm gonna. I'm I don't gonna know, but Sammy Bland said we got to bring Zan to nostalgia for a guest jazz set. Yeah. There it is. There, we go. there yeah. it is. Um, but like <laughs> April, what was it like being a DJ, like a battle DJ in the days of like Scribble Jam and, and all that that was happening down in Cincinnati? A little bit louder, maybe. Just keep it closer. Keep it closer. All right, all right. I'm wondering. Okay. okay. No. Um, so, back in the day with the Scribble Jam, we used to have um, Scratch Bastard um, <laughs> came down. And yeah. Um, yeah. It was, wow. It was just so much talent um, coming through, um, and it was always a joy to just to watch um, them go. Uh, um, a friend of mine, DJ Spare Change, he would always come and and um, and rock it, and uh, I really miss that. Um, you know those battles and, and the amount of talent. Now DMC, um, they still have it. You know the Animal Crackers and Noah yeah. um, organized that and helped bring that in. Um, but you know it it just kind of is not as 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 large as what. Scribble Jam um, used to be, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, with with Dibs um, um, helping organize that, and we would have back in the day. I was back in the day, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was I was there where they they had the first Scribble Jam, and you know Eminem, you know before he blew up, was there in the MC <laughs> battle. You yep. know, what I mean? oh, wow. that much, um, you know, talent that would come through, and how large, and how you know national it was people would come from all over just to, to, to be there um, and so I would you know I would be with down they used to have um, Dibs um, and DJ John Doe uh, with the 1200 hobos um, they used to have the, the b-boys underground with G fresh and this was on like one of the uh, WAIF um, you know one of those like college like you know public um, not non-profit radio. Uh, non- yeah, public radio. Goes on today, um, but yeah, um, and so I would be down in the in their st- on the radio, and they're just cutting, just scratching on the air. You know what I'm saying? And just doing all <laughs> kinds of stuff. And it was it was a good time. You know, lots lots of shows, lots of hip hop shows, and you know, and of course Animal Crackers and their their throwing shows and stuff like that. And it was a good time to be a turntable turntable as DJ. Yeah. I like that name, DJ Spare Change. I don't know why I like yeah. that. There's like so many things you can do with that. Like, I don't know. I anyway. remembered who I was talking about. It was Chinchilla. Chinchilla is the Chinchilla, one who has that spot yeah. by the water and he's got like the craziest cuts. I talked yeah. to him one time. Um, you'll never find him online though. Um, but yeah, so for people who don't know, Scribble Jam is like the ultimate like hip hop festival. Like, and it just happened to be in Cincinnati, which was dope. And, uh, Man, like, like like you were saying, it's not just Eminem with the rap battles. It's not just DJs with the DJ battles. You had graffiti battles, break dancing battles, and like, if I could like take a time, I, as as black people don't necessarily like time traveling backwards, but uh, if I could, I would go to Scribble Jam, probably the year that Eminem did his thing. But uh, that's about as far as I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Um, hey, uh, Krupp, let's go with a show and tell real quick, and because uh, I know you have to go pretty soon here, um, but I know, I know you don't want to miss show and tell, so uh, why don't you take us through that? Yeah, we just uh, we have so many DJs with awesome uh, things on, around them or something that means something to you. It can be DJ or non-DJ related. We mm-hmm. just do this every every episode. Um, if you guys are ready, we can start with you, April. Looks like you got all kinds of goodies over there. <laughs> I do, um, but I, I Can we just turn you up a little bit more? Sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is that better? Not yet. 
Not yet. No. Uh, I don't know why it keeps going softer. Yeah, I don't know either. There's an option that does auto, um, it, it, it does auto, uh, voice leveling, and I can't tell whether it would be on or off for you. Because it, it is adjusting, so it might be on. Okay. There is good. Yeah, yeah, that sounded good. I didn't adjust anything yet, so let Yeah, me... I imagine it's got the auto adjust on, because it sounds good now. Oh, actually, it's off automatically. Automatically, adjust volume is off. Um, okay. All right, sound good now. All right, all right, cool, cool. Um, so I'm going to show you my first mixer. Nice. Let's all see right. that. Ah, this oh damn! This... What it used to look. Oh like. man, that is uh, ancient. That. Yeah, no crossfader. It's all up faders. Yeah, wow. Um, so those is that is that four channels or is that how's yeah, that? Work? Yeah. Okay. Um, One's like a, a volume. Yeah. Whoa. It's got the level meters, like the the yeah. <laughs> the not lights level meters. That's <laughs> like ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, too oh, high, too high. So and does like, that thing still work? You know what? I was looking for the adapter today, and I oh. couldn't find it. Um, the power supply. Uh, That's got to be worth something. Yeah. Well, I don't know. This is from Radio Shack. Oh. And, you know, Radio Shack is out of business. Yeah. Well, no, that's April, what I'm saying. April had it good, though. Everyone else got, like, their first mixer had the rotary knobs. April's like, like yeah. no, I got the level faders. I'm good. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> up and down, up and down. I don't know why I went blurry. All right. Alex, what you got for us? Oh my gosh, mine is so different and it's not even music related. Oh my gosh. Right. But it's so it's really just all my plants. I have become a plant mom over the course of quarantine. And this tree that is sitting next to me, I, I oh gosh. I've been growing it since April and it has grown like three feet. And I've been so proud of it. So that's my little light show and tell. I mean, I have some like I have my original mixer, but it's not, <laughs> it's in the back. <laughs> what is, uh, what's your top botanist tri uh, tip? Like, what's your top botanist tip and trick? If I'm trying you know? to raise plants at home, I got a succulent. That's all I got. It's like a little cat. I was going to say, yeah. everyone has a succulent, right? You got to <laughs> That's all I got. All yeah, I this, this one was from a baby. This one's from Amazon, but I have some other ones, but they, they've like grown so much, but I just rotate them. They sit in my windows. And I use like plant food every two weeks. You talk to them too, don't you, Zan? Oh, you know I do. I like turn <laughs> and just be like, you know, have conversations because I'm bored uh, in the house. My succulent's name is Sarah. Do you have your Do your plants have names? Oh no, they don't. I should do that, huh? I just so I wanted to look them up, you know, like their official names. So I put post-its by them at first. So I remember. <laughs> it sounds lame, oh, and wow. I just like wanted to remember their names. So. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually name them. Maybe they would love me more if I did that, but it's proven otherwise. I have a confession. I had one plant and oh, I no. thought, yeah, oh, it, no. as it got colder indoor, I, it was next to a window. I just forgot to water it. We're going to have a moment of silence for a corrupt plant. Did the plant have a name, James? <laughs> no, it was right. literally from Kroger, but I was like, if I can take care of this plant now, I can k take care of animals. I love kids like, but like. The plant is just something that you got to get used to, like making a connection with it and like consistently water it or else mm -hmm. once it's dead, it's dead. Right. You can't like revive it. Right. I believe that's you how death works. <laughs> 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 Last no. time I checked, that's how death works, bro. <laughs> it's just you're done unless you're like a uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> But no, mine is, I've just needed this for my mental health almost, like just being in the house, working from home, COVID, like I have a whole ass tree in my house now. <laughs> I'm just like trying to figure out where to put it sometimes. Yeah, I feel That's like that oxygen like though. You got all the oxygen you need. My, my friend Ashley says, James, didn't you eat a house plant once? We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Anyway, but that, I like that. That's a good, uh, healthy hobby to get into, right? <laughs> those are that's yeah, those are uh, that's unique show and tell. And it's yeah. like a whole vibe. Like it makes mm -hmm. you. It just makes your place look. Good. Yeah, I have like some more. I have my moss wall, and then I have my other ones over there in the window. So nice. the lighting's not that great over there right now, but they're beautiful. We trust you. 
<laughs> uh, Zan, I wanted to come back to you. You've been doing a bunch of corporate events. You talked about it a little bit. Um, do you have, uh, like, how did that kind of evolve for you? I know you said that you just, people kind of word of mouth. Um, yeah. How has that been working for you? Enjoying the corporate side of things or do you prefer the clubs? Um, so I would say I, oh man, uh, it's hard because of COVID right now to answer that question, but I would, I would say I prefer the club um, just because I feel like I can like really go with my style like my outfit I can play my music like it's something that like I really look forward to like planning my you know playlist in advance for and you know just like ideas of what I, what I would have played and everything so and it feels like I can really show off my mixes more at a club and you know your your blends are like appreciated and someone can be like Ooh, you know, or, you know, or, you know, you can run into other DJs and stuff like that. So I think just the atmosphere of it is, is what I enjoy the most. Um, but corporate gigs have taught me a lot about DJing that I just have been able to apply to even club stuff. You would be, I mean, you know, just, just the professionalism and, and stuff like that is, is just different um, overall. But uh, I got started doing I'm trying to remember how exactly I got started doing corporate events but um I I could blame it on word of mouth um I could also say maybe I had a cheat code with my day job because I work with people in the NFL and uh I was able to get hired uh to DJ uh some events for our NFL clients uh so I got nice. started and I had something some stuff for the Broncos um, just through our Broncos foundation, you know, like their, uh, our clients foundation with them and stuff. And then with that, I was able to get connected, you know, with the Bengals, um, and really, um, you know, shout out to Robert Williams, DJ blaze. He has been a very, uh, instrumental person in my corporate DJ career growth. Uh, he used to be a DJ for the Bengals too. So, and him and I, when he moved out of Cincinnati, he really like him and I got connected and he said, Hey, you know, I have all of these corporate people that reach out to me. Would you be interested in doing some of these gigs now that I no longer live in Cincinnati? And I was like, this felt like a godsend, you know, I was just like, whoa, what? Like, this is crazy. So um, I started working with him and he really started helping me with some of the stuff for like Cincinnati Children's. Um, also, like- he did some games and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, he did that too. So, um, you know, it just, he really believed in me and it was something that I will just forever be grateful to him about. So, um, that was somebody that's been very instrumental is, you know, just keeping your connections. So is a big part of it too. I agree. So yeah, that's, uh, that's two DJs that we know now corrupt yourself and Zan that, that enjoy having a manager. Uh, that was one of the topics that I wanted to bring up, um, at some point and we're kind of already here. Uh, could you just talk about like, you know, what, uh, Sujit does for you and uh, why you like that and maybe some things you you would change if you if you feel comfortable yeah no I just it's it's another person in your corner more connects more advice more experience um, you know I often think about like you know how like DJ duos work it's like double the marketing double the production towards your brand and, you know, if it makes sense, it makes sense. And so a lot of people don't need a manager and they feel like they can handle everything, which is true, depending on like how much you have, um, you know, on your on your plate. But it's definitely big, especially if you're getting into the corporate and the club scene and you're trying to, you know, market yourself on social media. There's just so many different types of opportunities that can come mm -hmm. that can be sent to you at any given day. You know, and you're most of the time your manager is probably working with more than just you, maybe other artists as well. And so those can that those people's connections can become your connection. So there's a tons of positives, usually not free, though. And you just have to kind of measure out like all that mm -hmm. stuff. That's how it's been for me anyway. Yeah, I think it's about finding a balance, too. It's, you know, because I knew I had before I went to doing more corporate gigs. I was this, you know, certain person on social media, but then when I started doing corporate <laughs> gigs, I was like, 
okay, I got to make it more PG. <laughs> you know, it was finding a healthy balance of like, you know, also representing yourself too and kind of having a somebody that helps book those things for you can help for sure. Cause he's given me advice. He's like, you might not want to post that for sure. You know, you know, or just like, and, and I, you know, sometimes you just need to hear those things. So um, we talk yeah. about that all the time on here where we talk about like what you should and shouldn't say or post mm -hmm. that could jeopardize your brand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't even mean like you don't have to have an opinion towards things, but mm -hmm. it could, if it's like something that's going to be really, you know, taken the wrong way, like you, you really have to consider it before you post it. And yeah. that's the world we live in now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to move over to tastemakers just in the interest of time, because James, I want to get your contributions before you have to go. Sure. Um, but typically we do tastemakers. It's kind of like, you know, what are you guys listening to or an album or a, a track or an artist that you're listening to right now? Um, being that it's the end of the year, everyone's doing like their year mixes, myself included. Um, but I wanted to get your opinions on song of the year, artist of the year, album of the year, and honorable mention. And James, we can just do this in subsequent episodes. Probably we'll do this like through January with all of our guests. Um, so we can have multiple ones uh, just since we host the show. But uh, April, if you, I want to go to you first. Uh, song of the year, artist of the year, album of the year, and then honorable mention can be anything. Just something you want to say like, yo, this, you know, this drum beat helped me out honorable mention like it could be anything but yeah i want to start with you all right we got um, you all right no okay um i was saying i'm in between um nas and and buster rhymes as um album of the year uh, wait, you talking about wait wait what did they both release new albums well <laughs> i know i know definitely uh buster rhymes did oh wow i gotta yeah. listen to that he yeah, did yeah, yeah me too i didn't um, did his thing on that yeah 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 um Song of the year, though, as far as 2020, um, to be honest, I, with me being in school, I'm, I just, I, I like to zone out and um, <laughs> it go to my, my stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of what I was really into. I, I tell you who I was. I listen to SoundCloud a lot, mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's this guy named Nick Hakeem. And um, I really like his music. It's like this um, soulful vibe, kind of Anderson Pack type feel. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that came out this year, if that qualifies. But, you know, again, these are also um, a person, well, an artist that I really, really love is, is Moses Sumney. Um, I know he came out with something this year, but it, it doesn't top what his first album that I really, really, I can like listen to that over and over and over. I mean, like, and never get tired of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's just the vibe that I've, I've been in during this time. Um, usually I find a lot of reverbs and stuff like that um, that I really like, um, mm -hmm. you know, by different um, uh, producers. But mm -hmm. mainly, I've really, really just been listening to a lot of drum and bass. <laughs> Liquid drum and bass. <laughs> no lyrics. Zam, <laughs> oh. uh, song, artist, album of the year, and honorable mention. Okay, this might be corny, I guess. My song of the year, just overall 2020. It's just made me feel like a bad bitch. Savage. Oh, yeah. um, Ooh, savage. Okay. Yeah. Now, are you are you the Beyonce remix or no? I like the original. Okay. So Beyonce was like too Beyonce on the whole song. Gotcha. And I just like, I feel like it took away from the original. Um, so that's my song of the year. Album of the year is going to be Big Tron, Detroit. Um, that's been a really great album. I just love how, what Big Sean talks about and Deep Reverence is my song on there that I would say is with Nipsey Hussle is my also song of the year. Uh, but I uh, wanna, wanna be a little bit more with reality, <laughs> savage song. Uh, and then what's the other one I gotta answer? It's um, song honorable of the year, mention. honorable mention. Um, somebody that I've really been listening to lately and he's jazzy. So let me, um, is, this guy that, um, why can't I remember his name? So I was, I really like Terrence Martin. If you guys haven't heard him, Terrence Martin is really good. 
um, jazzy kind of, I feel like you would like it, April. And he's, um, I forget where he's based out of, but it, it might be LA, I forget. But he's, he's a, kind of a more jazzy feel that I just like, I can sit and do my work and listen to his stuff so Ooh, and is it new oh stuff or is it like old old and yeah old? okay yeah he has some t- stuff from 2020 but there's like this album from 2016 that i've really been listening to a lot um and yeah velvet portraits is the name of the album it's just beautiful cool so james what you thinking bro this is a, the first installment so i have to pick a couple of these but i think that's a good thing based on what i'm gonna did. all right so i got I'm only picking this track of the year because I know it was going to be your or track of the year because I knew it was going to be yours and I'm going to try to make you have to pick a new one last second. That's fine. I got plenty. So a WAP for track of the year. Absolutely. Only because it's just the club killer. All right. I got to play that forever. Artist of the year. I have a tie between Doja Cat because I think she's the future and I love her style and the pop, the sexiness of her music. And Meg the Stallion just because she released so much music and mm-hmm. she's the trendsetter right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I got what is the album? Oh, I think album uh, album of the year should have been The Weekends for sure. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I really like that album, and I like the song, every song on it. You're just mad that he complained about it, but anyway. <laughs> no, and then I, I got. I'm not mad about that. I didn't even know he complained about. It. Honorable mention. Yep, honorable uh, mention. Anything you want to talk about? I'm going to say Lil Wayne for all of his No Ceilings releases. I really like the freestyle mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Song of the Year, uh, just for the first one, get it out of the way. I'm just going to go WAP. It was uh, <laughs> Artist of the Year is Meg The Stallion. Just getting that out of the way as well early because, listen, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm going to do it alive. Here we go. I'm going to type in This Is Meg The Stallion. And I just want you to listen or understand, like, all of these hits right now. And like, if you're like, oh, she wasn't the artist of the year. Let me just read this off. Body, which is the number one TikTok song right now. WAP, Sat, my song of the year and corrupt song of the year. Savage, Van song of the year. Uh, Girls in the Hood, which was a dope remix of the NWA mm. version. Mm. If you haven't heard it, you got to. Um, Cash shit song. Uh, you know, if if the uh, baby. Yeah, yeah. If uh, Act Up hadn't come out uh, last year, Cash shit was right behind it we played it um cry baby i don't know and then captain hook was hot last year hot girl summer was hot last year freak circles she was on big old freak like it just keeps going like she mm-hmm. is killing it so artist mm-hmm. of the year meg the stallion song of the year wop uh album of the year um for this one i'm gonna go with i'm gonna have more because it's, it's this one's way closer than the other two but uh, i'm gonna go with the 21 Savage, uh, Savage Mode 2 it was dope. And uh, I'm loving playing games to that right now. And then honorable mention, I'm going to give to Harry Styles because uh, I think he's, I, I understand that Blinding Lights got pop song of the year, but I feel like it should have gone, it could have gone to Watermelon Sugar or that other one that he has, Adore You maybe. Um, so I think he's putting out great pop music. Um, and then there's definitely more I'll talk about in future episodes. Because uh, that Ariana Grande album needs that was good. Yeah, it was good too. <laughs> I haven't listened to that actually, and I know a lot of my girlfriends would be mad if I said that, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to cut that out for the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You definitely not be telling your girls that you've not been listening to that album. Oh, shit. Uh, like, this is getting me through. I'm like, what? I like this segment, though. This is our first time doing the segment like yes. this. And I, I yeah. think that was very good. I like it. I'm just glad we get to do multiple ones of it because there's definitely mm. more to talk about there. Uh, Krupp, you got 14 minutes, man. What do you want to talk about? Uh, we can do tips for listeners. We can do more guest questions. What do you want to do, man? Uh, let's see. I'm going to read some of these comments. So let's see. April for president. Richie or Richie or... Oh, what's up, Richie? From Cincy. <laughs> we should shop by book. Um, oh, man. How Go. many listeners are we? do we have right now? Do we know? A thousand. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, dope shirt from Isaac all. Blake, April. Uh, let's see. I know Snipes is on. Snipes is always oh, he's on, like, man. Cry Baby is popping. <laughs> <He's talking about laughs> that Come on, bro. 
All right. Well, I don't know. I think we could do tips, uh, some quick tips for listeners. I think what we should do, though, because we got, um, I don't know how, like, I don't, we've hit so many different tips. I think we need to do yeah. industry tips or like going, how can we give a, advice to a DJ going into 2021? Like right now, mentally, every DJ that isn't working is probably just like, you know, mm-hmm. what do I do? Like, what's the, what kind of advice can you give to a DJ get, going into the tail end of a pandemic you know that's what i want to talk yeah. about uh stay on course that's that's about my tip for any dj who's getting in one just believe in yourself and mm-hmm. keep working don't give up i like it i mean yeah just stay uh stay in touch with your old connects for sure Reestablish, mm-hmm. get your network back Support support whoever you can, whenever you can, right? Mm-hmm. April, were you going to say something? Yeah, I, I really feel like people are really amped. You know, like there, there's some, it seems like seem, seemingly some hope in the future that things are going to, you know, settle down. And you know the clubs are, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. It's just going to unleash. Yes. It's just like it's gonna burst, and you know why give up now when you you know as soon as as soon as we get on the other side, oh my goodness. So, you know, I, I feel like during this time, people DJs should be really honing their craft, craft, mm-hmm. you know, waiting because you know, I got this. And we we're gonna be ready to pour out. They're gonna be ready to receive. You know what I'm saying? So don't I, I really feel like that? I think it's just gonna be buzzing. You yeah, it's be all this. Twenty twenty one. So, you know, wanna just release sigh all that cry dance <laughs> and so rejoice true. with the dj so keep going yeah i love that whatever you did you sound great I, I yeah i'm like wow yeah, clear as you, you sounded <laughs> love it. I don't know what. <laughs> you know um before we go because we're kind of we're kind of off the tips pushing thing but i want i want to know how is the cincinnati dj community reacted are you guys still are there still people? Because every time I go down in Cincinnati, it doesn't matter whether it's Sunday, Wednesday, Tuesday. There's people out there having a good time. Is that still the case, or has it dropped off a little bit? I mean, I haven't really been in the scene. I have really tried to just stick to my bubble. I've kind of felt like I, I definitely tried to do some more IG live concerts before, but I, when I was kept getting kicked off and stuff like that, it wasn't very inspiring. Um, but I would say the DJ scene is still, it's definitely changed, you know, with people having to sit down and, and not dancing and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's, I think there's just like key places that you can go and you can rely on to know that there's going to be good music. And then there's ones that like, I don't even think they're hiring DJs anymore right now, from what I understand, um, because the budgets have changed. Um but, you know, I know places like Gala and Nostalgia, they've been able to keep a very good crowd and stuff like that. So, um, and, but yeah, I think, you know, I know April has more insight because, you know, you've been able, you've been teaching and stuff like that. So more often, and you've definitely tapped into the digital world of DJing. Yeah, well, um, from what I've seen and, and also um, just with, you know, you just have Richie on. I'm I'm always seeing pictures um, of combat at Tin Roof, and there are people always there. Yeah, um, you you mentioned nostalgia. Um, DJ uh, Raw D. Um, you know, Raw D. Said, Wait, hold up, hold up. I can't let you just go by it. The dude's name is DJ Raw D. Girl, Ra, yeah, yeah, Raw D. Yeah. Wait, wait, you yeah. said girl? Female DJ. Uh-huh. Yeah, female. She. Yeah, yeah. You check her out. Um, she she does um. On Instagram, she has um, the Quiet Storm. Um, I believe that's on a Thursdays, and you know she's been is you know really a lot of buzz. You know you check out her her feed and stuff, and I know she's been out um, doing sets. I think at Nostalgia, um, mm-hmm. and um, yes, and I, I think Shines have been out um, doing some sets and stuff like that too. So um, also um, DJ Pillow. Um, be out there, yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> doing happy hour. So there, there's definitely, and he's been doing that for a long time, you know, you know, 
and, and yeah, there would be, it's funny you say, yeah, uh, that uh, Cincinnati, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> every <laughs> night going, going like, like there's no COVID happening. <laughs> oh man. But we do, have, we do have the curfew, so, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, but definitely it, it, they're, they're making it work and, um, you know, and, and having a good time. By the way, Mike, it's it's not it's pronounced R A H dash D. So get your mind out of the gutter. It's just it's dope. Yeah, Listen, no, not uh, uh, mine. Mine ain't in the gutter. If your name yeah. is D J Raw D, I, what else am I supposed to be thinking about? Raw, like, <laughs> raw, like, so raw, raw D, raw D, D, not raw. <laughs> Wait, what? Ra. Is, oh, raw, it's raw D. D. My bad. All right, that's that one's on me. That one's on okay. Me. I'm just kidding. I thought it was that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, though, but wait. but we got uh, Drewski. Shout out to Drewski for hey, big shout out hey, to Drewski. Hey. Drewski's always popping in. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, we got a bunch of DJs in here right now. I, we appreciate you guys joining us, man, for real. I just want to apologize to the Columbus DJ Podcast community. <laughs> <laughs> man, honestly though, like it, it's all good. Like it, it. There's so many different DJ names these days. You just never know. So like, that's true. Yeah. I mean. Wow. I'm, I'm just going to move past it because I, I have so many questions and, you know, she's not here to answer them. So I'm going to move past it. Uh, Drewski asks, what do you think will be different when the clubs open? Um, you know, how has COVID changed the club industry even when, you know, things are back? Um, what do you guys think? Uh, open forum, anyone who wants to take this can. I mean, for me, I feel like it's it's been hard for me because – um, you know, I, I had my day job and I was going into the office and stuff like that still during through COVID. So like I decided to not DJ as much with COVID so that I could keep the people around me safe and make sure I wasn't, you know, being exposed. But like when it does open back up, it's, it's going to be hard for me to not be comfortable with not wearing a mask. Mm. You know, it, it's just like, and, and when you put the mask on and you're DJing it, there's a chunk of it that gets taken away almost, you know, like, but it, it's up to you for sure. Um, but it, it makes me, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm so excited for it. And, you know, I, I want to just think that it's just, we're going into, you know, uncharted territory almost like we don't really know what to expect. Like it's just kind of going into it we're just playing it by ear, it feels like. And I, you know, I kind of really don't know what my plan is. I'm kind of just going day by day, sadly. What'd you think, April? <laughs> well, I, I immediately thought that, the, you know, um, I think they'll have more events outside. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I definitely feel you, um, Zan, with the, with the mask. I DJed a, a wedding, my cousin's wedding in August. And, um, one thing I discovered that was new, I don't know if you probably, you probably already knew about this, but I use this app. Um, I think it's called request, I request now. And you know, it's, it's, they, you just put up the number. Um, it's, it's not your own personal cell phone number. Um, but this is, you know, you turn it on, um, you, you put out, you know, so people don't have to come to your booth, um, say, you know, text, text your request to this. You, it pops oh. up on your screen. You can, and it, I was like, this is, this could be the future. You know what I'm saying? So there's some things that um, are coming out of this that probably would stay, you know what I'm saying? Where you, I mean, think about it. You don't have to have people coming up to you and yelling in your ear yeah. all the time. You know what I'm saying? You can just get this um, and make sure you, you can shoot. You, it was, it's great because you could, you know, after it's a great marketing tool, you know, you said, thank you for coming out. You thank them. And, and you know, it was, it, it was great. Um, and if I was, a, you know, you know, working out there all the time, I would definitely use it. So I think there's some positives that, um, you know, after COVID leaves, you know, that we could still use this technology to to keep people away from the DJ booth. <laughs> you're, so you already think about the future. You're like, we can roll this out and <laughs> never talk to people again. Never take a request. <laughs> oh, so man, true. that is funny. No, yeah, I've been a proponent of, you know, just, you know, whatever. Stick your phone in my face and show me your request. I've been a proponent of that even before COVID and especially now. So, um, you know, if, if I can, now if I can get someone to go on an app and request a song, that would be amazing. That's the yeah, just look that up. I think it's I request now. I mean, and, and it gives you a tutorial. I used it. It worked great. 
Um, and people actually it, just did it. They downloaded the app and, and made requests through that? No, I, they don't even have to download nothing. They oh. just text, you know how you, they just text it, you know, once they a just text number. the number, yeah. and then they can instantly t- send you the stuff, but it comes to you through an app, not through your personal cell phone. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. So like, you might have like a little card on the table with the number, text the request to this number. Exactly, and that's all they have to do. It was simple. It. Yeah. That, might be, uh, that might be the best takeaway of the episode. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. All right, so that takes care of that. We talked about the um, Cincinnati DJ community. Corrupt, I think you are out of here, buddy. Uh, we're going to talk about your name, your Zoom name, uh, next week. That's okay. unacceptable, but I don't want to you know, waste time with these two okay. talking about that. Pineapple may not be- – it, it belongs on pizza if, if, you know. It's just a different sensitivity on your tongue, man. It's just not necessary. But, Alex, April, it was great meeting you guys. Yeah, Thank you, you for too. coming on the episode. Um, hopefully, we'll have you guys back on again, and I wish you guys success going into 2021. Same to you. you. Yeah, same to you. Thank you. All right, Mike. I'll see you guys. Thank you, everyone. Who joined. Enjoy your time with the family. Yep. Uh, all right, guys. You know what we're here for. We got corrupt out of here. We're talking about elements. I want to talk about elements because I think once I'm done uh, you know, doing the DJ thing, I really think that something like elements, uh, bringing that to Columbus is going to be a path yeah. of mine. Uh, April, you are a part of elements on the planning side and on the staffing side. Zan, you were there uh, when you were 16 getting into DJing. Uh, Zana, or uh, April, I want to hear your story for us. How did you hear about Elements? How did you get involved? What's the history of it? And then, Zana, I want to hear from you. What was it like, you know, having that as an outlet and learning to DJ there, really? If, mm-hmm. if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm putting words in my mouth. But, April, you yeah. first, please. Yeah, so in 2001, uh, Timothy Thomas was uh, shot in the back by police, and there was rioting. And, um, you know, the, Uh, a group of um, people and over the Rhine um, got together and wanted to do a block watch, Um, you know, go around with video cameras and make sure they keep um, uh, police accountable. And Mm -hmm. from that, um, they, you know, got together. Um, Gavin Leonard is Lord and um, I forget the other lady's name. Um, They wanted to create a safe space for, um, for youth. And um, I met Gavin Leonard on a, a hip hop women and hip hop panel at Miami University. And um, I, I liked what he was talking about, what he was trying to create. Um, and um, later I, they got the center open, I believe in 2004, 2005. And I, I just wanted to give back. You know, I, I had, um, you know, um, you know, I, I DJ, uh, I can give something to this center. I wasn't trying to get paid or anything. I just wanted to help. And mm-hmm. so for about a year or so, you know, I just went down there and volunteered to teach the youth for, you know, twice a week. Um, and then they, they, they were able to get um, some funding to, to pay the staff. Um, and so, and I've just been there ever since, um, helping to teach. Um, and I really, you know, because I've been there um, with the transition of leadership and trusted, they know the work that I do. Um, they asked that I, um, uh, you know, take over uh, as far as the um, program director there um, as Brother Abdullah um, moves on really to hone his, his artistic abilities, but still teach there um, with the, um, the Studio E and, and he's gonna also create content for, for Elements. But, so, um, that's what I've been doing. I'm also, because I'm going back to school uh, for counseling, mental health counseling, I'm also looking at ways we um, could not only just, what we, what we do I believe is amazing, um, being able to um, quantify that um, in, in numbers as far as reporting and data and measuring uh, the impact of our pro- programming Mm-hmm. is going to be my focus, um, really working on social emotional development and um, being able to say, you know, look at what we've done based because we are teaching in this way, pointing out their strengths um, when we see that. And so that the students can build their confidence in what they're doing and, um, you know, and also tracking and then also bringing in mentorship, um, bringing in businesses so we they could be um, go on to be employed in creative careers, not necessarily this, you know, stereotypical, uh, I got a, you know, 
do the doctor lawyer thing, you know, or, or maybe everybody's not going to college, you know, how can we help in that way? So, um, especially through, through music. So we're, we're really broadening the scope that we're not just teaching, but, you know, how can we help them succeed, you know, as they grow into adulthood and um, building the, the character and the resiliency that's needed to be successful. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe if I can, uh, I don't want to correct me if I'm wrong, but Elements is like a, a, a community center that with a, with a focus on music and specifically hip hop music. And uh, I believe kids, kids can attend there for free, right? Or they have to sign up. How does that work? Yeah, so um, we work with youth from 12 to 24. Um, it's only twenty twelve dollars for the whole year to access all the the program that we have. So wow. we have um, the beats and rhymes. You can come in, you know, you grab a track off YouTube, record yourself, whatever you want to do. You can you can do that. But Studio E, you can uh, produce your own music. You can record there. Um, we also have some online programming. Um, so um, unfortunately, because of COVID, we ha had to stop our dance um, program. And the and the art program, um, but um, we do have that online as far as the dancing. So we also are in schools. Um, so a lot of the neighborhood schools we go online, um, um, CA squared, and and um, they um, if you look them up, they're a, a dance team, and they teach the um, the the uh, online programming. And then it, there's also some uh, in person still um, uh, that some schools are are willing to have that. And so we do go in there and, and uh, they dance in, in a safe way, of course, mm -hmm. uh, with masks and distancing. And then we also have our art table. We have emceeing, um, you know, the cypher battles and stuff like that um, on certain days. We were doing that outside on the street and over the Rhine. So really trying to engage the community. But yeah, it's really a, a, a nominal fee. Uh, for adults, we also have adult classes and that's just $24 for the entire year for the group classes. Mm -hmm. And you could twenty four hundred twelve dollars a year is nothing like for what for what you're getting. I mean, all right. your years of experience. The guy who you're replacing as program director, you know, is going off to do you know or their things. So just a ton of information there. And then um, you do your Tuesday classes still, right? I don't know whether it's online or in person now, but you're still doing those, right? Yeah. So the Tuesday classes, they're both. Um, they're both in they're in person, but they also get the Zoom going as well. So. Um, we're still working on on the kinks because I'll set up the Zoom, but then I you know I walk away and help others. So I don't know if anybody's getting in the room or not. <laughs> so I just got to work that part out. But yeah, but we definitely um, from seven to eight we have um, students, um, adults, um, twenty five and up. Um, we the most stations that we can have at a time is um, six. So you just gotta let me know so you know um, you have your station. Um, all sanitize, you know, six feet or more apart, um, and then we you know, jam and, and rock out. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful in there. I mean, you got people everywhere, you know, black, white, orange, purple, green, and they all got, you know, record box, Serato, whatever they want, virtual DJs abundant, and everybody's just mixing music. Sometimes it's, you know, people mixing over other people, but like, it's just a space where people can ask questions. It's really, really dope. Um, something I want to look into. And then Zan, I want to go over to you, kind of like, how did you hear about Elements? What was it like day one walking in? And then how did it make you a better musician or DJ? Uh, so I heard about Elements. I grew up downtown, so I've, I've always lived uh, near Over the Rhine and on the west end of Cincinnati is where I grew up. And Elements was originally on Liberty and Central and I drove past it like every day. And I saw that it said, you know, like music and stuff like that on there. And I was just like, I don't know what this is, but I, I, I need to know. So I looked it up and then that's when I saw that, you know, their classes and stuff like that, that they offer. Cause at the time it was just $10 for the year. And then it was just free. You just dropped in on classes and stuff like that. And I think there was maybe just two DJ stations uh, set up or three at most at one time. And then they did move over to uh, the other location was was that by SCPA? Was that the next one? Okay, and then um, and then that's kind of when I had come back. I had maybe just um, or no, I started going to that one afterwards for a, a little while, and that's I I loved it. And I'm trying to remember your second question because um, I I just loved 
seeing and being around people for the first time that were at the same time as me learning something new that is just such a um just so dense you know it's it's just something that is so it's so independent that you find your style but you also need people to help you along the way and mm-hmm. just you know being able to um be around those people it just helped me so much you know like we were talking about earlier with with my confidence just be like oh well I got this you know like they're all doing this the same as me like we're in this together you know trying to figure this out and like scratching and stuff and that that was what I loved about it the most is that you know a lot of your focus um April is is really just the original you know turntablism and scratching and stuff like that and that's what I just absolutely loved about elements it's just the raw form of the talent they teach you that and they you know get you to like how this actually originated and they um you know it's it's not really some frou-frou thing like you know you have to really you know work through stuff there and you know it's it's you know, tests you and it, you know, makes you um, just want to get better. So, and just being around somebody like April that can just, you know, walk you through a scratch, like one and two, and, you know, it's just, it's so nice to just, it's, it just gives you that patience and that confidence that young artists that are really getting started, I feel like need, and, you know, it helps you create a sense of community around your artistry and what you're trying to do. So. I mean, you're doing you're doing something you love. You're around people that are also learning, just like you are. So, like the anxiety of, oh man, am I am I good at this, or you know, am I bad at this? It doesn't matter because the people around you are also going with it too. And that's uh, I'm getting chills over here because that's that's what it's all about, right? Is just feeling comfortable yeah. learning a new skill and then also doing something you love. And then April, you just got to be so proud of how many DJs like Zan have come through who you've had a hand in saying like, you know, this is, you know, this is the right path, young Padawan, and soon you'll be a DJ Knight <laughs> and, you know, a DJ master like me. Um, you just gotta be so proud of what you guys have built over there. And now as the program director, I mean, you have even more control. Uh, you can hear the control freak in me kind of pushing out on you, but you have like even more uh, influence on how, how it looks, right? Yeah. Um- Zan, thank you for that. I mean, it's good to, I mean, sometimes I know I can be like so humble, um, you know, and not, but it, it is, it's good to hear that, you know, you, what you're doing and the effect that it has on others and, you know, to see how, Zan, you just, just grew and grew and you know there was a point where I just I didn't see you for a while and I was like man I wonder how she's doing it look she just broke out on the scene it's just just doing it just and then you know and I was like that's that's dope so I, yeah you give me chills there and um so yeah um you know access you wanting to to start something like that in in Columbus and we've talked about we've had building sessions of what we would like to see and we definitely want to expand you know um, Columbus we even in 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 the different neighborhoods um, in Cincinnati um, we've had um, families who you know they moved out to Hamilton Ohio which is about 30 minutes away and it's like man we would love to have something like this or um, we had a, a one of my um, DJ students. Um, DJ Congo is like 12 year old um, uh, little boy and or young man I should say and um, <laughs> he DJed and just did a, a great job at this youth event and we had this dance troupe from West Virginia and said oh we would love to have something like this so we are definitely you know uh, once we get everything solidified and our our, our foundation of what how we want to move forth we definitely want to want to want to expand for sh- for sure yeah, be it impact and especially like mind individuals like you, um, access, you know, where you, you, you have that teaching spirit, you want to share the information and, and it's so helpful and, and your knowledge about um, the business and, and, and marketing and all that stuff, that's a wealth of knowledge that you can share with the youth. I, I would love to see you um, do something like that. Yeah. Hey, whenever you're ready for, you know, Elements Columbus, I'm there. I, like I said, I, I, I think I have, I'm not, not this like an interview or anything, but like, I think I have the interest in kind of like, like you were saying, the 
ability to kind of help out with that. So if I can get the capital or like a space or, like, or just get, or just your help in general mm. on, hey, hey, this is how it works. This is how you, you know, find a space for the building. This is how you hire people like that. Like that part of it, if you can provide like a like structure, like an Elements Columbus type deal, I would be all about it. Okay. Um, but we got about 18 minutes left. I, you know, I got want to talk about battles and I also want to get to tips for listeners. So I think we had just enough time for both of those. Um, I want to ask both of you, how did you get into the battle circuit? Um, Zan, we kind of heard that story a little bit from you, mm-hmm. but what do you enjoy about battles and, uh, and maybe, maybe like, uh, just talk about your battle experiences mm-hmm. and I'll start with Zan. Yeah, it might. Yeah, because I know April has she's been in a lot more than I have. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I my I love the battle because I've always wanted it's always been a dream of mine. Like I was saying, you know, I, I've always wanted I was nervous to really do it because I wanted to be just so like dope at scratching, you know, already by the time I did it. But I was just like, you know, what, I'm just going to focus on my blends and like, you know, my quick changes and stuff like that and uh, wordplay. Uh, so you can really just use that as um, a way to kind of get a- around that sometimes. So that's kind of what my little finesse was. Um, but um, because, you know, I looked up different styles of, you know, battle DJs and what they do. And, you know, the wordplay thing really is um, something that I always really liked and um, just setting the mood. But uh I, I got into it with combat and the DJs here. Um, and then when I knew that just like so many of my other DJs were going to do it, I was like, oh, I'm going to do it. Cause like you guys are doing it too. <laughs> Cause you know, I was just like, Oh, it'll be like a good thing. Good energy. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, I'm going to, I know these people in the room, like they know I'm good. Like if I bomb or something like that. So, um, cause I may, may have not done it if I didn't, you know, know the people setting it up and, and stuff like that. But, um, uh, but yeah, my experience was just like, whoa, sweaty hands, just so nervous, just like everything you did is just about to go out the door. And then you t- the music turns on, and you're just like, fuck it. You know, it's just like, I-, I got this. Or, you know, like, we're just gonna get through this. And it was just like, such an exhilarating feeling of just like, you know, your people being there for you. And, you know, just something that you worked hard to do is just like your moment to really display that and just kind of show your style and like, you know, show what really gets you hype, you know, as a DJ personally. So. I, I think, I think you're saying maybe more words than, uh, and more words is like, it's, it's a place to show off. Like, I feel like, yeah. you know, I'm talking to two of the most humble people I've ever met as far as DJs, like, you know, I feel like I'm at, I am have to convince the crowd, like, yo, I promise you, like, these two right here, like, hold on, let me go to Glad Gallery View. Like, these two right here, they are dope DJs. I know they sound super nice. I know they sound super humble, but I'm telling you, they dope DJs. And I feel like battles give you that that uh, that space to show off a little bit and say, hey, this is why I spend, you know, X amount of hours in the basement, you know, just me and two turntables, a mixer, and doing the same thing over and over again. This is why I do it so that I can get in a room with a bunch of DJs and people go, hey, you know, she's pretty dope. He's pretty dope. Da 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 da. And yeah, April, what, what was your experience getting into battles and then doing it for as long as you have? Well, um, a, a new uh, fact is um, when I had my first battle was actually in Columbus at the uh, Hip Hop Expo. The two by and two, is that, was that it or no? No, two by two is, is the newer version of the okay. Hip Hop Expo. Got it. Um, in, the, in the late um, 90s, um, they had the ex- Hip Hop Expo at the convention center. And um, I, I battled um, DJ RJD2. I know him. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and uh, another DJ, and um, yeah, and I I came in second place, and um, I was I don't know I I I was like really like ah oh, you know really down on myself or you know I, I to be honest I thought I thought like they gave me second place because I was a girl and you know and you know and I was just like ah but it <laughs> it it gave me. Um, you know, just this hunger and desire to want to be, you know, do well, do better. And, and I did some exhibitions. But for a while, you know, I wanted to get into it. 
but you know, with the DMC um, style, and a lot of the, you know, you like you got to cuss people out, you know, in your in your yeah, <laughs> it's be, yeah. and you got to talk about their mama and all that. <laughs> And I was like, ah, it, it, it didn't feel right to me. Like, I want to diss their mothers. <laughs> I mean, and I, but I felt like I had to do these things in order to win. And so I kind of just kind of stepped back a little bit. Um, but then um, um, when I was teaching at, at Elements and then they had for the first time the Red Bull three, uh, three style came to Cincinnati and they were looking for DJs and I was like, ah, and I said, like, well, this is this is a good way for me to, um, you know, get out of my my comfort zone and my shell and really push myself. And so that's really how I looked at um, battles. You know, how can I get better? How can I sharpen my sword? Um, and then so when I did the, the the three style, I felt like I, you know, I watched some of the videos. I was like, man, I got to I got to put everything into this and I got to do everything to, you know, even place, you know, because I was looking yeah. at all other DJs like Ice Cold Tony and, and, and Clockwork and, and I was like, oh, you know, I got to. <laughs> and, you know, um, and, 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 and uh, Noah I mean, of the Animal Crackers was in it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I really got, you know, really step it up. And so I stepped it up enough, you know, to win. And I just, I wasn't, I, I was just like floored, like, what, you know, what is this, you know? And so having that, that feeling and being able to go to the, to the, you know, the finals and all that stuff, um, even though I didn't, you know, win, it, it gave me, or, or even place really, it gave me this like, okay, this is what I need to, to do. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe I need to to reduce my work hours and my day job and put more into this and do that, you know? So I, I just, you know, that's one thing, even though it, it is a competition, um, it just the growth that it produces um, is, is really, yeah. it's, I mean, it's a good thing, you know? Um, it's so easy to, to be in the basement um, by yourself and, you know, get stagnant. Um, but when you have others around you and you have some type of incentive to, to do well and you don't want to get up there and, and be whack. So you got to you got to put some effort into it. So that's that's what I've been I used to do. I mean, of course, I'm not in the circuit now, but, <laughs> you know, that's that's what motivated me when I was doing. Would it. you do another one? Oh, yeah, if I, I, I need. Yeah, I, I just need to have time, you know, yeah. what I'm saying to I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to just dump, jump in there and not have put the time and effort that I need to do to mm. do well. If if I do yeah. if I do it, I just gotta I gotta you know make time to make you know to look mm -hmm. decent. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 listening to you talk, but I'm focusing on what you said at the beginning, where you were like, um, you said I don't want to you know call somebody's mom or diss people, and I felt that too actually. Uh, I think it was like maybe the fifth Cincinnati DJ battle that I did, fifth or sixth, and. I was, you know, building my set and there was like a, you know, maybe 20 or 30 seconds. And I'm like, man, it, I got to bridge these two, uh, these two sets. They're kind of almost two different sets. I got to bridge them. And I was like, you know, I'll do something where uh, it was like one of those breakdowns where it's somebody talking shit. He's like, I'll tell you what, I'm this, I'm this that, the other. Blah, blah. And then I went to my second part. And like when I was practicing, it felt good. You know, I'm like, I'm mouthing the words and this and that. And then when I got to the show in Cincinnati at Tin Roof, I'm looking at all my friends. I've done like six or seven battles, come back, you know, back and forth a number of times, known these people. And I'm like talking shit to them. It's like, this is, I, I didn't even like mouth the words when I, even though I practiced mouthing the words, I didn't even do it because I'm like, why am I calling these people motherfuckers? I love these people. Like, <laughs> they came here to hear me DJ, like we're supposed to be having fun. So I'm totally with you, April. And now like, I don't have the, I have the battle technicality like this is what you do but i don't have that like killer instinct we're all like you know zan you said it we're all just here. it's just a great moment to be around djs and say hey this is what i can do when it's you know when i'm not trying to entertain a crowd when i'm just trying to be dope mm -hmm. um i could talk about this forever we already right. went over it. um guys tips for listeners is my favorite segment of the show um i've already talked about how dope you both are and i want to just know what tips do you have for djs hopefully that people have not Mm -hmm. And uh, Zan, I think you gotta you get to go first. Yeah, um, my thing is is definitely 
practicing and preparing and because that that gives you your confidence that you need um and I mean that's that's an obvious tip but my other one that is maybe just like an unsaid thing is just like um being able to be just your communication and just being professional and just being willing to stand up for yourself too um and knowing what questions to ask, like when you're um, being asked to do a gig, you know, it is just like, you know, really letting, asking people, you know, what, you, what are you getting into? You know, like there's, there's some people that like over time, like I've been able to build a trust with them, but um, there was somebody recently that, you know, asked me if I was available to come for their birthday party and bring my DJ stuff. And I brought my DJ stuff and he was like, oh, we're just kick back and relax. And I was like, well, I thought I had built a relationship with you that like, you know, this is a done deal. Like I'm coming here and I'm DJing, but I just didn't ask enough questions. <laughs> so I showed up and I thought I was getting paid that night. And it felt so silly for me to be, you know, this deep into deep my DJing and have something like that happen to where I was just like, you know, I, I guess I just got too relaxed on this person and just thought that like, you know, you know, things were going to be like kind of just what we just casually talked about, but you have to, even with people like that, still asking the questions because you could show up and it could be something completely different than what you're expecting. And Zan, I don't yeah, know yeah. you, but uh, you had, I don't know if this was a story that you, had, that this is an additional story, the one you just told now, but I remember a story back in the day that you told me a very similar situation happened. You, and you said, that's why you prefer to have a manager yeah. because at least, you know, no, maybe people to you um, mm -hmm. would talk a, a certain way or, or describe the gig a certain, a different way mm -hmm. than if they were to be talking to, I think his name is Blaze, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, uh, it's, 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 yeah. I, and I want to, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. And even some things with him have, have gone, you know, not as, as what we up to par is what we expected, you know, like I got asked to DJ a wedding reception. And then when I got there, they put me in a corner with like cobwebs, and it was just like, 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 you know, like they paid a lot of money for us. And then like, you know, you're thinking like, this is their wedding reception. They're going to have a nice venue. There was no AC. So now I ask, is there AC? Wow. Isn't that silly? Wow. Isn't that silly? Wow. But like, I sweated out my whole outfit. My armpits were wet. <laughs> like by the time I started DJing and I just felt like a, like a hot mess. And I was just like, I don't even want to take a picture of me being here. I was just like, this is awful. I was like, if this is somebody's wedding reception. And I was just, so it's just knowing the questions because I've gotten myself into this in some situations where I'm like, this was just for the money this evening, <laughs> you know, because it just was like, whoa, that was not what I was expecting. So it is kind of funny yeah, that we like, like have so much fun doing what we do. And then, like, sometimes we do have those gigs where it's like, well, thank goodness I'm collecting a check yeah. tonight. Uh, April, tip for DJs, please. Yeah. Um, so I, since we were talking about uh, uh, battling, um, one of the things that I've seen over this past week or past couple of weeks when I'm teaching the um, adult class, um, uh, and we're not doing any kind of, like, high-level scratches, but it, it might be... Um, um, when, when I say chirps and, and stabs, I'm sure people know, or should I explain what that is? Uh, the, the, the 10 second of the, the, yeah, the 10 second explanation of what a chirp and a stab. Uh, yeah. So, you know, when you're, um, you, you hear a sound and, um, you have the fader open and as soon as the sound comes on, you, you cut it off when you bring it in forward motion and then you, um, bring it back to the middle, um, when you're bringing your hand back. Um, so, and, and what sound does that make, April? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it should be like a. Chicky, chicky, chicky. <laughs> I was, was going to see if you're going to do it. Yes, that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Okay, but you know, there's sometimes we we do stabs where you, it's just like the da 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 da. You know, and um, and, and so I will start off, um, you know, demonstrated what it sounds like at maybe you know 90 beats per minute. Um, and then um, 
have the students try it and they, you know, will see, you know, they might not get it right away. Um, but when we, when you break down the, um, the scratch pattern that you want to learn, you break it down in, in bits and you slow it down. Mm -hmm. Use your internal mode in, um, yeah. in, in Serato where you have you can, the range of, you know, 50 plus and just mm -hmm. slow it all the way down until you get it at that level and then once you get it, break it down at that level then you start to increase the speed and that's where you work on your your the speed um, and 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 what I've seen at the beginning of the class people get frustrated we break it all the way down and at the end of the class they have it within mm -hmm. an hour so that's is really just if you see a pattern um, breaking it down slowing it down and then gradually bring it back up to speed and then you'll, you'll learn a new pattern um, within a day. And I, I typically will start at 70 BPM. Will, what, what, what will you start your students uh, at? Yeah, we, we were doing a scratch pattern. We were at 70, we, we went down to 50. 50, okay. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're um, you know, of course it's, it's not in double time, but yeah, mm -hmm. you know, even half in that, you know what I'm saying, you were, you, yeah, and you're just getting comfortable with it, getting the, the muscle memory and, and how it shits down and you just gradually speed it up and, and they'll, they'll get it and they'll, you know, it's like, see, you can do it, you know, and just seeing the face light up. So yeah, yeah. that's, that would be um, a tip I have, you know, when you're trying to learn a, a, a new scratch, slow it all the way down and, and, and break it up. I always say, if you're not frustrated by how long it's taking for you to learn it, then you're not practicing it. Mm -hmm. you know, like, if you're not frustrated, like, how the heck do I not have this already? Like, you're all, you're there. You're almost there. Just keep pushing. Right. Keep pushing. Yep. 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 Uh, gals, thank you so much for being on the show. I think it's going to call it there. Thank you for the tips yes. um, for, for being on here. Sorry, Corrupt had to run early. Um, but these two guys, I don't know why I'm talking over here. You guys are right here. Um, these two are dope DJs. I'm not saying female DJs. These two are dope DJs. Check them out on their social media. Is there anything that you guys have coming up that you guys want to talk about? Streams? Uh, April, I know you're still doing the Tuesday thing. Is that open to anyone? Yeah, open. Um, DM me if you want to um, have your own um, station on Tuesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. If you're 25 and up, if you have youth, um, we have uh, in-person classes. Um, from 5 to 7 p.m., again, just um, RSVP, you know, again, so you can have your own personal space. Um, but, yeah, yeah, come down to Elements. We, we got you. Oh, and then, Zan, anything you got coming up that you want to tell people about? Or maybe a project uh, you worked on? So I am working on my end-of-the-year mixes to finally get to people because I feel bad. I haven't been as on the scene this year as what I have wanted um you know COVID has kind of tested my creative side as far as like where you know we you know where to go with this but I'm you know I'm, I'm really excited I have you know I'm not quitting I'm keep pushing keep you know um the needle going no matter what um so and yeah I just you know and, and thank you for having us on here this is just mm -hmm. inspiring to just to, to talk to you guys and just to like talk to DJs again. It's just so great. Cause you know, running into each other at clubs or social scenes is always different, but like, it's, it's nice to just really feel like I'm, you know, getting to talk to you guys about stuff is great. And see both these, oh, both you guys oh, were nervous man. before the show and we had a great time. Everyone, no one messed up and did anything, <laughs> said anything stupid besides me. Um, which is, which is totally fine. So, uh, guys, that's episode 31 in the books with April Rain and DJ Zanity. We'll be back next week and every Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Gals, thank you guys so much for, uh, you know, kicking with us and, um, hope to see you soon, hopefully on a dance floor, um, but not too early. <laughs> yeah, thank you. My pleasure, guys. Take care. <laughs> see ya. Thank you.